welcome today from a very sunny Dorset, a very warm and sunny Dorset. So I do hope the sun is shining with you too. Summer is on its way, or so it seems. So I'm um, very excited this morning to have two of our previous candidates with us um, who are going to discuss the role of a site manager with Cress Nicholson and Mystery Group. So sit back and enjoy and over to you, Angela. Thank you, Caroline, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to our virtual career chat with myself, Angela Forbes. I hope you're all safe and well and looking after one another. Now, these past seven days have seen us all celebrate St Patrick's Day and Oats Day for those in the Royal Dragoon Guards. And this coming week weekend, we leap into spring as British summertime starts. And what a perfect day to celebrate Mothering Sunday. So a day to honour those mothers and mother figures, both past and present. So we extend our best wishes to our military mothers, wives and partners. Now, in the news, we continue to be appalled and distraught as the events unfold in Ukraine. So our thoughts and prayers are with everyone affected. We donated the proceeds from our Insight Day to Red Cross, and we have recently supported and applauded one of our candidates delivering aid to the Polish border. Now, if there is anything we can do to support you, or indeed, if you'd just like someone to talk to, then please get in touch with our team. Now, we've been running these virtual career chats for two years now over lockdown to bring construction, its careers and employers closer to you, our service lever and veteran community. So our chat this morning, as Caroline has just said, is to discuss site management. So an incredibly popular career choice and one where many roles exist. So our speakers today are Richard Holmes, site manager from Chris Nicholson, Stephen Harrison, assistant site manager at Vistry, and Lee Packer, resource manager at Vistry. We'll take questions at the end, so please type them into the box as we go. And without further ado, I'll hand over to our first speaker, Richard, and we'll all switch our, our cameras off, Richard. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Richard Holmes. Um, I left the army back in 2019. Uh, after serving 17 years, um, I left as a troop sergeant uh, in the Royal Engineers um, with a construction background to a certain degree. Um, since leaving, my um, my career path was slightly different, to be fair. I originally signed off and decided I was getting to do security consultancy. Um, and once my circumstances changed at home where my uh, partner fell pregnant, um, I had to have a quick change of thought uh, and to see what I was going to do. Um, and that's when I got hold of um, Bill Force and spoke to Caroline about jumping into construction management, basically. And that was my first link into construction. So thank you, Caroline, for uh, setting the way for me, I guess. Um, I suppose my my journey was, like I say, was a bit slightly different. But it was it was challenging at times because you spend a lot of time uh, sending out CVs um, and not always getting the responses or sometimes not like, zero response at all. Um, I think over my first two to three months of being in civilian life, I had not, I was, I was unemployed um, and I'd sent out a good 70 emails um, and CVs prior to actually getting a job offer. Um, my first three job offers um, didn't, go, didn't go so well, um, mainly because of my history uh, and me not having the key skills that they wanted to go into them sort of roles within project management. Um, I was quite lucky enough to get a contact within Chris Nicholson that give me um, the my in, basically. So the networking thing's key, if you take that one away. Um, my, my, so yeah, they, they give me my in for uh, Chris Nicholson. Um, and that was on my third month of being in civilian life with no work. Um, my interview went really well and I got offered the job straight on the day. Um, there was myself and another soldier called Jay Gear, who's um, five rifles. Um, both got offered the same job, both took the same job. Uh, and he's down in Kent and I'm up in Essex. Um, again, he's, in the, he's done the same thing as me. He's left the military um, after a short period of time and managed to find a way into construction. Um, but it just proves the point that people are actively recruiting soldiers for, for that reason, which we'll come on to a little bit in, in, in a little bit. Um, my transition then going from construction, well, so from a, a manager within the military into management and construction was slightly different. So Crest got me on a programme, an apprenticeship, 
basically. Um, it was a four year program. I'm still on it. Uh, and over that four years, I've had to go from uh, knowing little to nothing in construction to running sites uh, like multi million pound sites uh, over them over them years. Uh, being military, we're quite driven. So my career path, I shouldn't be a site manager now. I, I meant to have meant to be an assistant now, a uh, site manager the next two years. But because of the way we are and we're, where we're built, uh, I've managed to make site manager within two years rather than four. Um, so yeah, the pressure level go, go up a little bit, but it is worth it in the long run. Um, and it always helps if you've gone into a company that's offered you them them avenues because it gives you an umbrella to learn. So if you do make a mistake, it's not like you're going to lose your job instantly because they understand that you're still going for a process of learning and developing, um, which is it, which is nice. Um, any pro my, my problems when I uh, first started, there was quite a few. Um, being military, we're quite abrupt. Um, and <laughs> as much as we talk and have banter with each other, when you're talking civilians, you have to kind of tone your language down a little bit, um, especially when you're dealing with customers. So on the first offset, it's you you have to reevaluate how you approach people um, to see how you get on with uh, how you get a deal with customers. Um, but all in all, it's it's pretty good. Going from an assistant to a site manager was quite a big leap, I must admit. So as an assistant, you're you're there and you're assisting, as it's in the title, the site manager um, on a role where you're just literally making the site run day to day with the trades down on the ground. You do less paperwork, but more active stuff on the ground. As soon as you enter site management, your stress levels go up because you're then in charge of the whole thing. Everything, every little, little cog is down to you to make sure it works. Um, so on a normal day-to-day -day basis, I am in early, I finish late. Um, you, have, you spend a lot of time on your computer, uh, borrowing out emails and dealing with customers on a daily basis. You spend a lot of time dealing with stakeholders. So I'm in a PLC company, so I'll get my CEO involved quite often um, because he wants to make sure his turnover is going to be accurate. Um, you spend a lot of time dealing with materials. So other companies, which you'll probably find out by Vista Group, have um, resources controllers. Within Chris Nicholson, as a site manager, you deal with resources. Um, so you're then having to time things out properly. So Lowing your lead times and when things are going to get called up and all that sort of good stuff. Um, so your program runs on schedule, if not ahead of schedule. You never want to drop behind the schedule, but always stay um, on it or in front of it. Um, I suppose the key skill side of things, the transferable ones that I picked up through my interviews going into Crest, um, was the key aspects that I didn't think would come into management. Um, within a site, with site, site sort of scenario. Um, the key ones that I picked out was loyalty. Um, within the Army, uh, the Navy and the Air Force, any forces, you tend to be really loyal. Um, within the industry, if you've got that loyalty, the, your company will back you 100%. Um, you're robust and you you can adapt quite, quite quickly. On site, you deal with as much as you plan things in, you have to react to everything on a daily basis. Um, what's that old phrase that no um, no plan survives first contact, they say? Um, it's very true, especially on site. Um, so you can plan as much as you want, but it only takes one little issue or one mistake off a trade to backfire, and then you have to reevaluate everything. So you're constantly on the ball, you're always on the toes, which is why soldiers tend to make really good um, site managers. You're disciplined. Um, not just in the fact that you turn up on time, you're correctly dressed, you're I wouldn't say clean shaven because when everyone leaves, they tend to grow a beard. Um, but you tend to look after yourself and your approach on things is is very good. But it's the fact that you can discipline the trades on the ground as well. Um, you're not there to be dishing out agois, as they say. Um, you're there to make sure that the job functions and everyone's safe. So you you enforce health and safety rather than um, telling people to get off site. You encourage them to do things properly. Um, and then you've got your stress thresholds. So. The army is quite a, a reactive place to be in, um, especially in my own career. I spent a lot of time overseas uh, and you react to stuff and your stress levels rise pretty fast. Um, but over your time served, you tend to deal with stress a lot more and a lot more efficiently uh, than, than most civilians. So when you come into this role, 
um, especially as middle management, you've already dealt with most of the stresses already. It's just yeah, the context is slightly different. So you can deal with your stress levels quite quite well. Um, we're very detailed as ex-military. Um, you spend a lot of time going through phase one, phase two sort of training where you're getting picked up to, to, to make sure your boots are clean, make sure you get tired, make sure the room's tidy, um, all your ablutions are all nice and tidy. Um, and if you've had the lucky experience to be uh, an instructor in a training for establishment, then you've then enforced that um, sort of like eye for detail. So when you go into a construction site, you've got to look at it as like you're buying that house. So when you're going around properties, you're making sure that the trades are doing things um, to the standards um, within the tolerances. They're doing it to a good perfection. Uh, so when their customers moves in, they have less issues um, and that they appreciate what's in front of them. So that eye for detail, that keen eye for detail goes a long way, especially if, you, if you're leaving the military and you're coming into it and you're starting fresh. When you become an assistant, you'll spend a lot of time snagging. Um, so that eye for detail works out um, pretty good. Uh, and then your management styles and skills. You spend a lot of time in the military talking about management styles and management skills and how, how to get the most out of people. Um, as much as the uh, subcontractors don't belong to you personally, it's up to you to make them function. So getting on that personal level with them to a certain degree, to understand them, to, to, to find out what makes them tick, to how to get the most out of them, works out in your favour. So all that, them years of training, sitting in them lectures, um, and doing your coursework when you do your Lance Corporals, your Corporals courses, your Sergeant's courses, it all pays off because you know how then to deal with the customer, well, not the customers, but the actual trades on site and get the most out of them. This works out when when, when push comes to sub and you've got tight deadlines, you can talk them around into doing what you need them to do. Um, and it's not going to cost you any money. It it goes a long way. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, the, they're the key aspects that I've used and I've put on my CV. Um, and they're still on my CV and I still, um, when I do eventually press, which is inevitable, um, I will use them key asset, um, assets again to for my next role because they are fantastic. Um, like I say, I come into this industry with l very little knowledge on construction. I've built an airfield in Oman with the Royal Engineers, um, but most of my career was spent doing communications or bomb disposal. Um, so going into construction, everything's new. Um, but it is possible if someone gives you that lifeline to jump in there, it's definitely worth taking because you can do it. And I mean that um, if I like say there's a guy down in Kent who's infantry on Royal Engineers. There was another guy in Crest, Royal Engineers, Michael Wilkinson. He's still he's, he left Crest a while back, but he's gone through the same process. Um, we are sought after. Like, we are really good at being great employees uh, and we'll always deliver no matter what. Um, which is what companies like, companies like them, people that will stick out the crowd, will push hard, will um, move forward and, and dominate the industry. You will, you, you will progress really fast within this industry as long as you put your, um, put, knock up the gears basically, if that makes sense to you as all. Um, I think that's me done roughly. Richard, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Thank, Thank you very you much. Very much. I can pass over to Stephen Harrison, please. All right, yeah, I, uh, I'm uh, Stephen Harrison. Um, I'm a uh, former Royal Marine. Um, I left in September of last year as a, uh, a colour sergeant, uh, PW1. Um, I, uh, I, I first met or I first got linked in with um, Angela and Caroline uh, the year before. I found out I was getting medically discharged. Um, so I, um, I started putting my, uh, myself about. Um, and um, I started doing um, work placements. Um, I did finish the Royal Marines down at um, CTC as the, uh, the colour sergeant for phase one training. Uh, so getting out and about was uh, was quite easy for myself. Uh, as soon as um, I got work placements, I, um, I, was, I basically went to my boss, um, told him what I got and they were happy for me to do uh, whatever I wanted realistically over the next um over the next year um so i uh, one of the, one of the main things i did do was update my cv i've never done a cv i spent all my life in in the marines um and it was quite daunting to to, uh, to to first of all figure out what i wanted to do but then when i did i went um 100 percent for uh, for construction i uh, i got a work placement with wilmot dixon 
which was really good. I spent probably two months with Wilmot Dixon and they were telling me, yeah, we're going to employ you. Um, and then I had a week with Vistri, a week with them. Uh, I met the performance director and the, uh, the director for where I am. I'm down in uh, at Wellington, near Taunton. Um, and he basically told me to uh, to keep in touch. Um, it did tell me to tell you that I think just keep in touch. I, I stalked him uh, because I, I wanted a job. He, he no jobs going, but he uh, I stalked him that much. He uh, he got me a start, um, which I did start in November last year. I didn't finish the Marines until September, but I um, I gave up the pay uh, from the Marines I was in and. Uh, I got discharged in September. Probably one of the biggest things for me was uh, the work placements. I think if you do a work placement, um, just take every day as a uh, as a job interview. Um, whoever you work with, whoever you meet, every day is a job interview, especially on these work placements, because you, you never know who you're going to run into. Um, the courses that I, I did before I came out, I, I'd already done my knee boss general. So I did a, uh, a Nebosch construction, but that was to uh, to fill in a, a bit of time. And I also did the um, property maintenance course, which is five weeks long, which gives you a week in in every every aspect of uh, a building from laying bricks to tiling to plastering, uh, which I, I found really good. Um, on on this site. I, I have Thursdays off because I'm uh, I'm still an assistant. I was a trainee, but I do the uh, NHBC NVQ. So every Thursday, I am sat at home um, studying until I'm qualified. Um, that finishes at the end of May this year, so I'll be a fully qualified assistant. Um, but when you first come in, the wages I, I took a 50% cut in wage, uh, but luckily because I've done 25 years, I got my pension to to top that up. So that was the only way I, I could do it. But I spent, I was told it be between 12 and 18 months as a trainee. Uh, but after three months, I, I got promoted to assistant and the, the money uh, was good. Um, and it, 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 it's very rewarding. I, I think be, being on a building site always reminds me of when I was a corporal, you're, you're on the ground. There's not a lot of paperwork to do. Um, and the paperwork that you do is you know it, it, it's minimal and it's it's easy enough you meet every day you meet different people different walks of life um just because you've been in the military um not many people on on this site i'm on um i've been in the military but they do respect you the uh, the transferable skills like um rich was saying um you know turning up on time is a massive thing you know we've just um we just lost a person who was an assistant because he, he couldn't turn in on time you know my working hours are eight till five thirty i'm here from from seven till sometimes six at night so get the weekends off um yeah it is um it is very good I, every, every day i uh, i'll probably meet customers i've got three or four appointments this afternoon to meet customers which was was new to me um and you have got to watch how you speak and what you say to them I've never never promised anything to them. However, with a new house, I, I always tell them whatever snags that they've got or anything wrong that I will endeavour to sort out. Um, obviously, with with trades, I always carry a, a program around with me and even a, a check a checklist. So I'm always going around making sure that everything that's on the program is done. And if I ever get stuck, I phone the site manager. Which on this site, I think we're quite a unique site. Um, I retired as a colour sergeant. My uh, my site manager is one of my old Marines. So I took him through training. Um, he left the Marines in 2019 as a Marine. And then when I joined here, he was my site manager. So uh, that we, 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 we did have a couple of issues at first, but but now we're, uh, we, we, we get on really well. And because it, we're, we're both ex-Marines, this site is uh, it, it, it's run probably like a uh, a bootnet camp, which uh, unfortunately for some trades they uh, they soon find out. But it, it does run quite well. Um, if um, that that is pretty much 
me in a, in a nutshell, if anyone's got any questions and uh, please ask. Thank you, Stephen. That was incredible. Thank you. And can we pass to your colleague Lee, please? Hi, Lee. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks so far to Richard and Stephen. I, I suppose I'll introduce myself and, and Vistri and, and, and just go over a couple of points. I'm Lee Packer. I'm one of the resourcing managers here at Vistri and we deal with um, site based white collar management roles. Um, across 23 regions, um, all the way from St James's Park up in Newcastle down to Exeter and and across to Kent. So there's nowhere on there's nowhere in the UK that we don't have um, sites or developments coming out the ground. Um, that's probably point one from from my side. Um, we've got over 100, and, I think it's over 115 ex-military now working within the business. Um, majority of them being site based. Um, and a majority of them joining us in a in a trainee assistant site or a trainee site management um, role, much the same as what the guys are doing. Um, Richard mentioned it earlier. It is a fantastic routine because I think that starting not just starting a new job, starting a new chapter of your life, coming out onto Civvy Street, having spoken to the guys that we've employed, um, it's it's a lot to take on, and I think that exactly what Richard said the idea and the experiences you've got today I mean are unquestionably fantastic but there's a difference between giving being handed the keys to a development of 200 units on day one um, that's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress on you and the family um, when you're starting this new chapter so the assistant position that we or the trainee assistant uh, position that we offer and many of the other developers offer as well um, is for four years but then you get good success stories within that. And I don't think that it's it ha doesn't have to be the four years. You know, if you're good in this industry, um, you can shine and you'll you'll you know, you'll come above the mosh pit and you'll be grabbed by the collar. And and the guys, this sort of area, build managers, construction directors, they want to surround themselves with the better people. Um, we've got a great success story down in um, our partnership development, uh, our partnership region called Drew Smith on the south coast, a uh, guy called Cage. He actually got into um, assistant site management or training assistant site management in 2014. Um, he's now a construction director uh, for that Drew Smith um, region, which, yeah, and you speak to him and you absolutely understand why. So there was no time frame on him. It's a guideline. Um, and like I said, if you're good, you definitely will shine. Um, from my side, my advice to, to, to guys and girls such as yourself is, and we do live in a in a world that I'm still trying to get my head around. I mean, I'm 41, so I wouldn't say I was too old, but I hate social media. I can't even turn over with using the remote controls in the front room. I've got to get my kids to do it. So LinkedIn, though, unfortunately, is a massive, massive thing now in the industry. Um, I can't stress that enough. If you look at the, the numbers of um, employment, uh, fit, sorry, employment figures from last year for us as a business, it was either referrals or it was LinkedIn the majority so guys girls get a linkedin profile it doesn't have to be a bible um it just needs to have a presence online i would also strongly suggest that you start building um a connection database of people within the industry that that you want to to maybe follow or make them aware of yourselves i think that particularly for richard's employees and us we have area build managers or contract managers and obviously construction directors, they're the guys that make the decisions. They're the hiring managers for us. It's not me. Um, it's not the site manager where you may be working with them on a day to day basis. It's the people above him. So area build managers, contract managers, construction directors, start linking in with these guys, sending connections, making them aware of you and your experiences today. Um, they love ex military. Um, that is a definite. We've got a number of roles within the business at the minute for uh, trainee assistant site managers to come on board and join. Um, evidently, I just had a conversation this morning. We're looking for several uh, to be based down in Basingstoke, sort of southwest of London, um, yeah, southwest of London, um, and down to the south coast. That's just an example of a call that I had about an hour ago. Um, I actually think it's six, six people we're looking for down there. So that gives you an understanding of the size of the business and, and how much we're trying to our best to, to bring ex-military in because like I said there's one thing and, and we're aware of this 
the industry can be quite naive to the idea that they want what next door neighbours got. So oh, I only want people that have worked for competitors, but you start churning the same bases and the same experiences and you're not replenishing that pot of retirees. So the idea that we can bring someone on that has 15 years experience, five years, 20 years of experience um, under that military umbrella and we can bring them out onto Civvy Street and just help them and guide them over the next two or three years. That's fantastic for us. So um, and you will also find all our all our um, all our vacancies on our careers page, which is at vistrygroup.co.uk and then you'll see the careers um, page there. You can put in a search and um, every job that we have is on that and then we decide what other platforms to put it on. But like I said, I don't do social media on the best of times, so I leave that to people that are better than me. Um, again, I'm here like the boys for any questions you might have. Fantastic. Now, if I could ask our speakers to put their cameras on, we'll do some Q&A. If you do have a question, then please just raise your hand or type it in the box um, and we'll get round to it. OK, I'll kick off with a, a few to to warm us up and get us going. So, Richard, so thank you for kicking us off today. You mentioned the four year programme that you're on, you're part way through yep. it. What what is that programme? What does it look like? So your four year programme is or for you to get a degree in construction management. So it's a CIOB level six. Um, the first two years you'll do your level four and then your second two years you'll do your level six. Um, for me, it's it kind of got messed up because of the old COVID situation. Everything got postponed, um, but it is a good path. Like I say, you're it's not you're doing that coursework just to do house building. You're doing that coursework to do um, anything to do with construction, the industry as a whole. So it could be high rises in London. Um, it could be like factories, like commercial side of stuff, or it could be home building. So you got you you use that program there as much as your home building to get as much information about the wider construction industry because it's huge um so yeah the first the first two years is like that so you set your trainee for the first two years you then sit an assessment finish your exam uh do your portfolio and then do an interview with your um director and then if you pass everything that they require then you then get promoted to so, uh, assistant site manager uh, which mm -hmm. does come with a better paycheck i must admit a much better paycheck uh, and then over your next two years, you start your level six um, progression towards site manager then. Uh, and again, when you hit that two year point, that four year point, should I say, they'll assess you again to make sure you're um, good enough to be the site manager. Um, myself and one of our Jay Gears down in Kent have both made site manager in two years. So mm -hmm. like everyone said, if, if you're if you're driven um, and you put the hours in, you can literally you can fly high within this career pretty fast. Mm hmm. OK, and does everybody that comes in um, at your level go through this programme? Uh, yes, they do, yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I still speak to some of the trainees and they are still trainees um, okay. in other regions around, around the UK. Uh, and they they've not come, they didn't come from a military background, unfortunately, um, and they're still progressing through the, the career path of Crest. OK, and without prying too much then, could you just share with us just what that entry salary was so way back I'll, when you started? <laughs> So I left the army and I left on 38 and a half. Um, when I started as a trainee, I dropped down to 26. Um, bearing in mind, my, my, I was literally due a baby and I just brought a house and I was leaving the army. It's a, uh, it's quite daunting. And I'm not, uh, to be fair, it was like I was eating beans on toast for like a year. Um, mm. But that's that, knowing that figure is what makes you drive harder to be get to get up the ranks. Um, after my first six months, I was asking for a pay rise. OK, so I was going to ask how quickly or how long yeah. were you in that? But um, So I was on that for a year, just shy of a year um, before they promoted me. But again, you are literally, if you work hard, that they will reward you. Um, and now I've, I've popped back up. I'm on the lower end of the site manager scale, okay. um, but I'm due a pay rise in April, so I'm quite happy. <laughs> right. OK, so best of luck. Touch wood, you get that. Thank I'm you. sure you will. <laughs> so just, as, just, just to finish that off then, so as you transitioned, what did you what did you learn about yourself? What realizations did you have? Um, that's a really, that's a hard question. To be fair, I think I, I think it makes you more determined. You you realize when when you leave the army, especially if you've done years, like say um, Stephen's done like uh, twenty two years. Is it twenty two, Stephen? I think it was. 
Um, I've done uh, 17, 25, yeah. 25, 25 years. Yeah. Like, people do a full career and it is a home. You do get used to that lifestyle. When you mm-hmm. leave, things change. Like, when my partner used to tell me you work for a living in Civvy Street, you definitely work for a living. You 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 do live the high life when you're serving. You you get to you get a roof over your head. You train as much as you want. You know your annual leave. You get quite a good annual leave. The pay is good. Um, when you leave, you then have to start managing everything. You're managing your bills more. Um, you're managing your own career. You're managing your lifestyle um, and how things move forward. So you be, your whole mindset changes from taking everything with a pinch of salt to right you focus more and you do you you get a lot grayer by the way um you definitely focus a lot more when you leave mm-hmm. okay you become a grown-up almost yeah, a born and old yeah. grown-up <laughs> um so just because i know it'll be it'll be of interest lee on the salary point then um if you got any comment on that what what would kind of entry salaries be for assistant site managers coming into this tree? It, bear, it can vary, um, obviously, depending on in, where in the country. Um, 25 to 30,000 is probably where we are about for the trainee. I think another uh, another big point, and I, I didn't realise until I went to the first Build uh, build Force event, that this benefits, there's fantastic benefits, um, particularly with Vistry. I'm sure it's the same with Richard, but, you know, our pension, um, life assurance has just gone up to times four, for instance, and that's just come in over the last couple of days, isn't it, Steve? So that, yeah. that's happened. You know, you get a um, you get a bonus based on your performance, and that's not just your, you, that's the that's the team, you know? So it's a very much a, a one Vistry. I'm, I'm not plugging Vistry as such, but I can only tell you what I know. So the idea that the better you do, the better your comrades do, the better that everyone, you know, gets rewarded for that. Um, I was just looking now, like the car allowance, four and a half thousand, you know, it adds up. And that can be, if you've got your own car, that can go on top of the salary itself. Um, and like I said, the the benefits, there is a benefits package um, that we do offer. I, I'd love to know, how, I, can't, I can't attach to the... Um, I can't attach to the meeting conversation by the looks of things, but there is a document there that if anyone wanted to see the type of benefits that we can we do offer, then um, that's something. The I benefit, yeah, the benefits are really good. Mm. Even you know when I came in as a, a trainee, like you were saying there, I started on I, I've gone from forty five grand a year to twenty five. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I just taken on a uh, a five bedroom house mortgage, so I, I had a two grand mortgage. So uh, yeah, I uh, I quickly said to the director, I, I need to move up quick. And he, you know, like Richard said, he said to me, um, "Well, prove yourself, and I'll move you up." And it took me two months. Um, he came and made a coffee when I was having a coffee. He said, uh, "I like what I say. I'm promoting you." And mm-hmm. that was it. It was a two minute conversation, literally. And the month after, he sent me a new contract, and he bumped my wage up to assistant and at that time I still didn't know anything but he, he said I, I like what you're doing and uh, there's a big wage so I've gone from 25 grand car allowance fuel um, to a bigger wage um, which I'm always pushing for more you know I, I think all military want more doesn't matter what they're doing whether you're assistant site manager area manager or director you, you want more uh, but I do think being out of the military, I've got a better work-life balance now. Mm. Okay, you have to do handy things around the house. Is there an expectation that you're able to <laughs> roll your sleeves up? Well, I uh, I live in a bovis house and I sell bovis houses. So <laughs> anything goes wrong, I'm, I'm sorted because I snap <laughs> no, all the yeah, exactly so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously so it's not it... something you have to do a lot, Stephen, because not much goes wrong, does it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nothing, right nothing there. at all. <laughs> Never. Yeah. <laughs> So just just on that then, Stephen. So you do sound as if you're really settled at Vistry and and in the role. So other than the people and having a great prop boss, what makes it so good? Um, I think it's the uh, the the day to day. Um, it's like I compared it to the uh, being a corporal in the military. Um, every day is different. You know, mm-hmm. you get different different customers. Every customer is different, whether they're hard work or easy. You know, it, it's, that's the same in the military and managing people, um, mm-hmm. all the materials that you get or the lack of. Um, yeah, yeah, just uh, every day is different. There's never a day the same. 
And just on the kind of day-to-day -day basis then, so you obviously referenced that being ex-military, specifically a Marine, um, works well for you. How how do the trades respond to you or your colleagues respond to you? Or are you seen as a site manager in your own right now? Um, a few of them come to me and go, can I deal with you, Steve? Because you, we know what we're getting with you. So I'll, I'll tell them straight. There's no, I don't like to tell someone that they're, they're going to get something and they don't get it. I'm uh, I'm quite direct. Um, I'll tell them exactly what I think of them. I think a lot of trades like that. Um, if I don't like someone and they're, they're doing a crap job, then we're getting kicked off site, sent sent to another site. So th th you know, every day I'll go and inspect where they're working. Um, I always expect them to, to tidy plots out, and if they don't, they get a two hundred and fifty pound clean up charge, which they end up paying for. So it, it took a couple of months for trades to realise that. Me and Tom, the site manager, we're you know we'll go into a plot. If it's if it's not tidy, then they're gonna they're, it's gonna cost them in the pocket. And mm -hmm. trades don't like paying. No, they don't. They don't. But I think um, especially when kind of crossing paths with you and they just go missing the next day. That's obviously when I get to about. There's <laughs> another one. Okay, a question from Simon Guy. If you're able to join us, Simon, if you can turn your mute off or screen on. Oh yeah, sorry, um, Simon Guy. Yeah, I tried to pull my hand down actually. Um, oh, isn't it? Okay, that's right. No, no it's, I think it's been uh, answered anyway. But I'm still serving, so the the skills and the qualifications. A couple of the guys have just spoke about there. So we, most people on this conference, we know that we've got a lot of money allocated to our resettlement. I've done a little bit longer than the 24 years stated before, but them skills that the, the companies want to put you through, is that something we can gain before we get there, or do they like? to put it you through it themselves okay it's, so it, I, it, it's all to... sorry no 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 it's a, it's a good question it's um, do you need them to be job ready um so within as they start they're straight on site or can a company invest time and let them go off and get their nibosh or smsts or, or iosh i mean i, I like I, I said on there i did do my nibosh um construction and general but i don't need it i've never really used it um if I came with no qualifications whatsoever, then they train you. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd never been on a construction site. I just decided one day that I'll, I'll go site manager. And that was it. I took it from there. I, I, I have no, I mean, I, I did work experience with Wilmot Dixon. They put me through a couple of uh, courses because they couldn't pay me. So, but I could have done that when I, once I joined Vistry. So everything I do on a Thursday, is me NHBC, NBQ stuff, and then there's in-house training as well that you can um, you can sign up to. So, yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, so, so again, so does that mean that if I went and got, I hundred percent it will not be Nebosh, but um, if I went out and got myself a qualification, like um, I think was it CIOB um, level six? You were so, saying, yeah, Simon. So that CIOB is your is a uh, it's a it's it's a course. It's like just like getting your um. It's just an MVQ course. So to yeah. get on site, you you to run a site, you need your SMSTS. Um, that's like your go to card basically. Um, to get a, to get your black card to get onto site as a site manager, you'll need that CIOB or your NA uh, MVQ that's on that uh, Stephen's doing. Um, so everything's all that CPD stuff you have to build up through. Um. But most companies that I know of anyway, um, will if you join as a trainee, they'll push you through the courses they require to have. If you're going to go freelance, for instance, um, if you just want to go jump on an agency, then you'll have to have the minimum of like SMSTS, your first aid qualification, a scaffold awareness course, um, and some knowledge of what you're doing. Uh, but if you're going to make a career out of it properly, then you're probably off doing that trainee role and letting the company mold you into something they need uh, and then expanding your routes afterwards. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah. Sense. So it can come Simon, over. So, so it can yes, come over right. with me. That's what I'm so I, if I've got yeah. a qualification now, it can come in me, to me with that industry along with yeah, the one you yeah. just added on. Yeah, okay. so I, I did my um, I did agile and PM but, um, project management qualifications before yeah. I left the army. I've not touched them since. I asked my build director when I went for the interview if they meant anything, and he didn't even know what they were. He went, "We don't touch that." 
Let me just cross that one off as well, mate. That's great. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was just like, right, so we don't touch any of that. They are, they're very. Make sure, I, would, I would say, sorry, way. Rich. Yeah, I, I would. I would say, make sure you got your maths in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Yep, I get that. Thanks, guys. Thank okay, you. Hope that helps. And a question from Mark Sheldon: When is the, the when is the intake, the trainee intake? So that's both to Richard and Lee. Is this a, an annual thing? Is it just to open all your rounds? I wish it was. Okay. <laughs> um, no, it's as and when. We, 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 there is a percentage that each region tries to aim at in terms of bringing trainees on and graduates on. Um, but no, it's throughout the year. Yeah, Crest Nichols is the same. They'll scatter it through the year. I like they've just done it. They've just done. They've taken on three in the last two months. Uh, and I know they're going to take on. Normally they take on a few more before the September. But they tend to, if the site starts and there's an opportunity, they'll post it back out there asking for more guys to join. So if we've got some candidates that are watching this who are just more senior, so they've got a really strong Canary LC or Rumi or um, Royal Engineers, um, like 20 years worth of construction and engineering experience. So the trainee course isn't relevant to them. Is that right? They can just apply for a fully fledged site manager role in, in both organisations. Yeah. Yeah. All they've okay. got to do then is just. So like for all engineers, for instance, for my, we don't do house building in the concept of that anymore. Like I understand when they go through Chatham, they do their brick lane, they do their electricians course, all get qualified. But most of the stuff they do is for moving forward on the battlefield. Do you know what I mean? It's it's quick, it's quick stuff. So all they've got to do is get that knowledge. It's basically just swatting out all the knowledge that you need to when you go in that interview that you can kind of cuff it, as we used to say, mm. cuff your way into it. So if you can basically give them a few words and wisdom that you know what you're looking for, that knowledge you've got previously will will work out. But you just need to give them something that you're going into. So you're gearing it towards house building rather than building a HESCO hut. In a, in a desert, you're building a home, so you, you you've just got to look upon a few few things there to make sure you can actually get through the door. Okay. And then you learn afterwards. Then you learn afterwards. Okay. And again, all the trainee roles. Just a second question for Mark. All the trainee roles are on the website on the jobs yeah. board. Is that right? So the few fully visible. Okay. And Caroline, if you could join us, if you could keep us right. I know you've commented um, here in terms of work experience and the like, um, connecting with employers that should come through you ideally. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, we work really closely with this three, um, Lee, Lee and the wider team, um, and um, work closely with Chris Nicholson. And, you know, we, Wilmot Dixon was mentioned there. We work closely with Wilmot Dixon. Um, Stephen gave a great example that, you know, he was, apart from his stalking, of course, his uh, main route into Vistry, and he didn't just stalk a Vistry, it was me as well. But, um, <laughs> Um, oh, no, no, I shouldn't have said that. Gosh, um, my point with that is, you know, if someone if someone is constantly calling you, you know, I work with over 150 guys and girls. So if someone is constantly calling me, they'll always stay at the top of the list. So it's a, it's a little note to bear there, you know, not to be an annoyance, but always to be there in the front of people's minds. So back to Stephen's work placement before I got distracted with the stalking. You know, it's another good route in because, you know, you it's it's a, it's it's a period for you to showcase your transferable skills to get some time on site. Um, so even when you finish that work placement, and in Stephen's um, case, this this was the case, and another couple of guys that we've got doing work placements in other areas of history. At the moment, there isn't a play, there isn't an opening, but they've made such a good impact. They made such a good impression that Vistria are holding on to their details for those other projects that are due to kick off soon. So it's just keeping in there and just, you know, occasionally dropping an email saying, hey, you know, enjoyed my time on site. Can I come down for another week's placement? I think Stephen did a few work placements. So it's just keeping that connection live, really. And, you know, and we can also help that as well. OK, fantastic. Thank you. And I think it was it was Stephen that mentioned, um, obviously, after a long 25 year career, but um, you've got a better work life balance. So for those that have served um, for quite a while, their family's transitioning with them. So the, the, it affects every person. So what was that transition like for both your families? And is there, are you really having a better work life balance? Are there nights you work late or weekends you have to work? What, what does that look like? Um, well, I mean, being 
all, all military people know, you, you know, you don't get your sports make amends on a Wednesday. I think you go, you don't go off and play football on a Wednesday afternoon. You don't finish at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Friday or lunchtime to travel home because you're only an hour away. So at Monday to Friday, you're working, uh, but you go home every night. And I've never been home every night. <laughs> you know, that, that was the first thing that me and my wife, obviously it tested us for a, about a month, but you know, we've been married 19 years and I'm home every night and she's like, Oh, you're not home again. Are you? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, but now, now she's used to it. Um, I see my daughter a lot more, you know, I missed a lot of her younger years. Um, she's now a, um, doing a, a GCSEs. Uh, but yeah. And I, I, I personally think I'm, I'm happier, you know, as much as I did 25 years and I enjoyed all my time in the Marines. Um, it's sometimes you just got to go, right. That's it. That's that done uh, and move on. You know, I've, I've got other ambitions, you know, I, I, me personally, I don't want to be an area build manager. It's too, uh, for me, that's too much work. I want to, I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing um, and going off on holiday, going off at five o'clock on an evening, not getting phone calls to say, we need this tomorrow. We need that. When I go home at five o'clock, my work phone gets turned off. Whereas before I couldn't do that. Uh, so it's my time when I leave site, not still the company's time. If I have to work weekends, I, I work it, but then you get time off in lieu. You know, it might not be straight away. You could say, look, I need a day off on Friday because I worked three Saturdays ago and the site manager might go, yeah, that, that works. Okay. So, yeah. And for you, Richard? Um, to be fair, yeah, it is, it is much better. Um, that's how I, I started my family as I left the army. Um, so I get to see my daughter every night, which is fantastic. Um, the only, yeah, so the only thing I do miss is exercise. I'm not gonna lie, it's doing fizz. Like you do work, like say, I, I when I was working up in Suffolk from Essex, I was out the door at half five every morning, and I won't get back in till seven. So that time there, you've got time for your daughter, time for food, and then there's no time for exercise. Um, however, as soon as you start moving closer to home, like Stephen says, like most construction sites are roughly about an hour from your doorstep. Um, and you get on site normally half an hour early um, and you leave half an hour later but it's more to do with your how you manage that site then so you're just setting the day up um, and you're making sure it's going to run smoothly so that when you get home you are stress-free um, so you just it's just a bit of time and effort I guess it goes into it but yeah it's definitely for me it was it was a good decision at the it was the right decision at the right time to, to leave the military um, and it's it's panned out in my favour I'm in a lot better place. Okay, that's really good to hear. That's good to hear. So a question for Lee then. So obviously all our candidates will be watching this thinking, right, I'm going to get that CV dusted off. I'm going to get it over, see what opportunities there are. I've just heard two great employers this morning. Um, what catches your eye for a good CV? What catches my eye for a good CV? I think you just got to. I mean, it, this is different to experience. You know, if you're coming from a from a from a, a, a different developer, it, you want to see the developments that they've built. You want to make sure that they've had longevity. So it's a different conversation to the one we got now. I think all you all you can do on a CV is be yourself. And I think when you're laying it out, you've just got to. And you know, a, a CV can be fluffy, and you've got a—it's a piece of paper, you know. And it's really hard to get all your experiences down on a piece of paper. That's why I think, like LinkedIn, is such a key thing now, um, and just connecting with people. Um, but on a CV, just put your location, obviously at the top, and all your personal details. Maybe a brief overview um, of what you've done, just a snapshot. It doesn't have to be war and peace. And then, and then just break down. Um, your skill uh sorry your um qualifications and then your career to date mm -hmm. that i mean there's not much more you can do apart from that you know if you've won it's different if you like i said if you work for a competitor you'll be talking about pride in the jobs and and you know you'll be saying i've took this from you know from um from put the first shovel in the ground to giving the giving the keys back to the final you know person moving into sites so this is a different type of setup and as I said, you can make a wrong. I mean, like Stephen said, I think you said yesterday, didn't you, Steve, that your CV went back and forwards like a yo yo. Yeah. Until, yeah. So it, people buy people, they don't buy pieces of paper these days. I had a great success story down, I think it was, I think it was your region, Steve, or it might have been on the, our partnership side because the business is, is split. 
a guy walked, he was an ex-military, um, walked in on site and he'd done it for about a week or two, walked in one day and the area build manager was visiting that development and he literally went to the guy that got out the most expensive looking car and and said i've got my health and safety i've got smsts i've done my csc uh tscs all i'm looking for is one week's trial you don't have to pay me i just i just want to give i'll do anything i'll i'll, I'll clear up i'll muck out the muck out the flats it was a, yeah it was partnership side and then at the end of that week if you think i'm worth the money you'll give me the money you know for, for that and if i'm not we'll shake hands and i'll walk away well it got into the second week, the area bill manager phoned me up and said, if I don't have a contract for this guy by the end of the day, I'm going to write one on the back of a fag packet. He's mm. not leaving. And so it, the proof's in the pudding. He didn't even have a CV, um, never written one in his life. So I'm not saying everyone walk up to site and just walk in and go for an expensive car. What harassment going on here today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would. I'd just walk into any site. Yeah. Yeah, we know you would, Steve. Is, yeah, <laughs> the harassment thing comes up again. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. But no, that, that it, it, that's a success story, and that's why I think for, for on the on the LinkedIn side, connect with your local regions, connect with people in your area, make them aware of you. It's all about being in the mind's eye, like Caroline said earlier, more than anything else. Um, and just be up for it. You know, well, I, think, I think another another thing that I, I've got to say that I, I have seen on some of the sites is. When you're coming out of the military, forget your rank. Um, obviously, I was a colour striper, but I didn't come on a site saying I was a colour striper. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be doing this. You know, I ended up sweeping up. You know, and it was, yeah. Sometimes you think this is degrading, but you know, you don't you don't leave Civvy Street as a let's say a um, middle manager equivalent of a, a sergeant. Join the uh, the military, go into training, and go right. I should be a striper now. You know, it just it just doesn't happen. So you've always you know start at the bottom, whichever whichever construction site or whatever you're going to do within the construction world, and just um, start at the bottom because you'll get recognised. Easy. Okay. So just um, just for the candidates to take that our service leaders and veterans to take that next step. Then so so on the CV, a couple of very very quick questions. Some employers say give context to any exercises or projects that you have delivered, so timeframes and budgets and stuff. Does that help? Yeah. 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 Um, in terms of um, really pulling out and highlighting and, and kind of pulling that thread through the CV on any experience you have around environmental or health and safety or quality, are they words that you're looking for as you scan over? Yeah. When you see a lot of the kind of core skills at the top, they become a bit cliched in terms of project management. Do, do you recommend that section? Is, would you? Yeah, I do. Still add value. I yeah. do because okay. I think that it shows that you're willing to learn. You know, you're not ju you're not too proud. So yeah. Yeah. So show the skills that you've got. Um, and again, when it comes to the experience piece, it's hard not to talk military in that section of the CV, do you really expect them to demilitarise it and have it more civilian or do you, it's what you've done, so be proud of it and get it on the CV? Yeah. yeah. Steve, what would you say to that? Because you, like, you went backwards and forwards with the CV. Yeah, yeah, so I, the performance director, Roger Morton, he was a ex-CO for the Grenadier Guards. So he, he actually, the first time he saw my CV, he, he did say, take a little bit of military speak out of it but don't take it all out of it you know like you just said there uh, be proud of what you've done you know we've all you know probably from corporal sergeant upwards you've all project managed everyone's a good timekeeper you know and timekeeping is probably one of the biggest things on a site you know because if you're late you know you're gonna you know trades are gonna walk off because the site's not open so put time you know good timekeeper you know project managed yeah just just put everything that you think because not, none of it's wrong. So yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd put as much as possible. I think the other thing that that I I would stress is that we don't, you don't build the houses. So our, our white collar site stuff, they don't build the houses. It's our subbies, our subcontractors that actually build the houses, but they need to be managed. So people management, project management, you know, you're running programs to make sure all the subcontractors work towards the end goal. That's people management. So if you, that's a big thing to put on the CV. Um, you know, if you've run gangs, if you if you run big teams um, of people, definitely worth mentioning. 
So most yeah. most of the guys that are in the military, like Lance Corporals, Corporal Sergeants, they all have their management calls already. I know all they've got to do is when they're going through their CPD, it's just actually put in for the, the certificate and just load it onto the bottom of your qualifications. It's free, well, when I was in anyway, it was free. So you did the courses for it anyway, and it was it was more to do with time served in that rank. Um, and then you did like your, your your open lectures and stuff, but it's free, and it and it pays in Civvy Street. When they see it on that, they see that qualification, it works. It definitely works. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. So, my, can I last question to all four of you? I'll kick off with Caroline first. And um, what words of wisdom would you impart to the service leavers or veterans about to make that jump? So perhaps they're li a little overwhelmed by the jargon today, or they're questioning if they can actually do the role. What advice would you give them? Well, get in touch with us because you're brilliant um, at giving that industry knowledge advice. I can give it to a certain level as well. So we are here to help you understand your transferable skills and where and where they cross over. Um, attend these virtual career chats. If this is the first one you've attended, we've got a whole suite of them on, on our website. So go and have a look at them and, and they focus on other disciplines and, and, and other core employers. Network, 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 don't we hear that all the time? So it's about connecting at the right level. So it's about connecting with someone, whether you wanna do it from a military perspective, so someone that was the same regiment, the same rank, or someone that's doing the same role and get time on site. Cause just to add on that work placement, I had a really, and that, funnily enough, he was another Royal Marine, Eager Beaver Royal Marine, who after three days on site was offered a role with Morgan Sindel. But then equally, I had a Sergeant who after a week on site said, thank Christ, Price that wasn't for the rest of my life and he went to another sector so the work placement works both ways because it, it it's not your career you can then determine what that career path is so you can cut out the stuff you don't want to do and you can focus on the stuff you want to but most importantly engage early those that engage with me that aren't leaving till you know um end of 23 or or end of this year will have offers they'll have um they'll have options on the table so they don't they're not forced to just take something for the sake of it they can pursue what they want to do thank you caroline and richard um yeah uh, caroline said it network's a big one like if you get you put the feelers out and you might get knocked down quite a few times but you know out of them 10 people that you've sent them out to one of them's going to respond um and it might be not be the first response you get but later on down the line they will let you in uh, and don't be scared to make the leap um, that's how I was out of job for three months when I left before I got the invite for um, for Crest Nicholson and they gave me the job on the spot and I was working the day after. So have yourself a backup plan and do plenty of networking. Perfect. Stephen? Um, I, I would say uh, work placements, uh, what for me, it was key. Um, and I, I don't think I mentioned um, you both got me a, a job interview, which I'd never had before. Um, I, I got down to the final two and that was just from, you know, waffling. I didn't have a clue about what I was doing, but I spoke to you, Angela, for an hour, went to a job interview and uh, got asked to go back, went back and it was between me and another guy. He got it, fortunately, because otherwise I wouldn't be here now. So, you know, but yeah, it, it was all the uh, the networking and, and the, the, the work placement was the key, having a week somewhere. Perfect. And Lee? Yeah, I think what Steve just said there, every day's a, every day's a school day, isn't it? So, you know, if, if you don't get it first time, just just learn from it. Get some, get always ask for feedback, you know, positive or negative. We're all big people. We can all take it, but you're never going to learn unless you ask for it. Um, and I know I've banged on about it, but I can't stress to you how important something like LinkedIn is for you. Um, you can message these 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 senior hiring managers directly where there's not another sort of network you you'll be able to do that unless you're inspector cluso and you're going for email addresses through receptions that you're never going to get so linkedin think about uh, house builders names you can get top 10 house builders if you type that into google they'll give you the list of the top 10 house builders you can put that into linkedin you can put the job titles like i said area build managers contracts managers uh, construction directors and just start connecting to these guys and send them once they connect back to you and you're connected, you'll be able to send them a direct message and just say, look, this is this is this is the deal. This is where I am with things. Um, please keep me in mind. That's it. 
Perfect. Thank you, Lee. So listen, thank you to Richard, Steve and Lee for their incredible contribution today and to Caroline's as well. So the transition from the Armed Forces to career in site management is both achievable and rewarding. So we have heard from incredible employers today, Chris Nicholson and Vistry, and there are many more besides. So these are tried and tested pathways into construction, and this is an incredible second career with many rewards. Remember, as Caroline says, you are not alone. Build Force are here to support you and guide you as you transition. So please get in touch if you have any questions and we will help you take this further. And I will pass back to Caroline. Yeah, thanks, Sandra. And thanks, everyone. Uh, uh, as always, these are always a highlight of my week, these virtual career chats, listening to your journeys and even more special today because I worked with you both previously. Um, so next up, our next virtual career chat is on the 21st of April, where we'll be focusing on the role of a logistics manager with HS2, JVs, um, SCS and Balfour BT Vinci. So as uh, Skanska, Kostin and Strabag. Sorry, I nearly forgot that one. And then don't forget, more importantly, our live events are where it all happens so um, get yourself down our next one is on the 26th of May this is a very special HS2 specific one where we have HS2 limited their joint ventures and also the supply chain so that is recruitment from the Midlands all the way down to the south and um, but then also bear in mind that these are big contractors who have pro projects all around the country so definitely want to attend on the 26th of May um, go to our events page everything is up there so thank you very much I hope you you can go out and enjoy the day I have to say yesterday I fought the urge to stop early and go to a beer garden for a beer and it's going to be the same today because I've got too much work to do so if you have the luxury of go out go out and enjoy it because it's a beautiful day all right take care thank all. you everyone thank you bye bye thank you very much